Hey everybody, welcome to Cowboy Leather and Shoe Repair. I'm Scott. Today's video is, it's going to probably be a two-parter. So, look for the second part. But, part one, making a cowboy gun belt and holster. Now I've taken and I've cut out holster. It's a uh, 10, 11 ounce leather for a Colt or Ruger, five and a half inch barrel, single action revolver. All right, now I've got, this one I've made is just pattern. You see it's already dripped out. Set up for the bullet loops. And it's just cut off on this end here. We do. This is the important end. We shorten this end if need be. Got a buckle keeper. And if I use this pad, if I use this one, what I do is I round the, these ends off, you know, corners at least. But where I'm going to really go with this, I was watching a video the other day, and the guy was wants to get into making uh, cowboy action holsters. Well, yay for him. Got a lot of great ideas, except for he was burning his brains out trying to figure out the measurement. For the belt loops, or excuse me, for the for the bullet loops. Okay. He was calculating and triangulating and subtracting and multiplying and carrying. You don't really need to. Okay. You measure your bullet. Measure how far. Now, I go rule of thumb. Half inch, five eighths. Now, give me. I don't have a pen here or a... what you do is it's upside down centering this hole to the center of this hole is five eighths this little piece right in here that's half inch now that measurement half inch five eighths whatever you however you want to lay it out That'll give you measurement for 22, 38, 357, all the way up to the uh, 44, 45. It'll even give you, you can use the same dimensions if you got somebody that wants a holster and gun belt for a Taurus judge or the circuit judge or whatever it is that they have. Same. All it's going to change is when you make your little loopy, how high it stands up. Now this piece here is two to three ounce. This would have to be veg tanned. Cut. Oh, I know it's 36 inches long. That'll give you six, uh, six cartridges. And this is so five eighths wide so your little holes there are going to be five eighths use a five eighths bag punch and if that's if you're going to do the thread it through now if you're going to just go ahead and you're going to stitch these the measurements shouldn't change should stay half inch five eighths you know but well, that said, that's just a straight, a straight job. You know, there's no drop in it. This is kind of sort of more what you would find in real life cowboyness. What you see with the drop leg, the Mexican uh, loop is, I believe, Hollywood. 
You know, Hollywood comes out with the uh, the fancy tricked out rigs. You see, uh, oh yeah, Roy Rogers with a fancy tool gun belt and everything else, carrying double. Eh, the dandies did did that back in the old days if you found them. But enough of that. Now, what I do, and I was happy, lucky enough to find it. I found a pattern pack. Now, I get you right in there. That pattern pack right there will give you just about any uh, holster, just about any holster you want. That's worthwhile making, you know, for the wheel, for your uh, single action. Uh, long, short barrels, uh, the, like the, yeah, the bunt line. And it also gives you tooling pattern for the, uh, the gun belt itself. But it gives you patterns. It gives you the uh, length of the gun belt, how to set up your uh, bullet loops, the measurements, how they suggest doing it. They use nails to uh, kind of stick the nail in to hold your uh, shape. Now that's very handy. Again, you tune in, look at that. That just gives you a general idea of what, what this pattern pack has. Now if you want if you want to come up with your own ideas for the, the belt every once in a while, that's my go-to. I use that occasionally. I use this basically to show the customer. If they can't really think what they want and how they want it, this pretty much uh, pertains to the holsters. But it gives you uh, how to stitch the holster, how to put the plug in the end. <laughs> Tells you, you know, basically whatever you want to do. How you. Put the uh, put a weld in it to make it a little bit wider, and then it gives you tooling patterns. What I say with this or with the pattern pack, if you get something like that, and you want to make up your own holes, your own gun belts using that, I would say don't destroy the patterns. Get yourself some tracing film trace it out on that film yeah you'll have a big but you can lay it out you'll have your tooling pattern you'll have everything on there all at one time then if you feel real frisky you can make it get yourself some thick cardboard or whatever and trace it onto there that way you've got a permanent uh pattern and you can mix and match those patterns you can mix and match the holsters you can do whatever you want now i showed you this one here where that's just a loose end and that's where your tongue is if you want to get more cowboyish i've got i'm lucky enough i've got clicker dies to make my uh tongue and there's my buckle end. So I just click everything out. Because when you're doing stuff like this, time's money. And sometimes you don't have a lot of either. You don't have a lot of time, you don't have a lot of money. Now, if you're going to do this as a business, I suggest making sure you get patterns or whatever so you can just throw it down on your leather trace it, cut it, and, you know, jump into it and do what you got to do. If you're just going to do this as a hobby, you know, don't worry about it. But if you're going to do, do any kind of leather work, hobby, patterns are good. You don't build a house without a pattern or without blueprints. You need an idea. 
You need to know what color leather you're going to use, how thick the leather you're going to use, what kind of leather you're going to use, and the biggest factor is where you're going to get your leather. Right now, with all this unpleasant going on, I believe, I don't think all the Tandy stores have opened up yet. Uh, Weaver really don't have stores. You just kind of look through their catalog or look online and see what they got. I myself, I like to feel it, touch it, smell it, and, you know, look at it. Because I've been burned a few times where I ordered it up, say, hey, I want a, a double shoulder or whatever, and tell them what I'm using it for, and tell them, send me something that I can get a good yield out of. And I think they sent me the, the bone pile. Out of the bone pile, it's got more holes in it than Swiss cheese. And when you're doing this as a business again time is money and you don't have time to play around i find i have a place i go and there's a lot of places online that you can go and you know look at their leather but i'm only probably 30 to 35 minutes away from uh, a mennonite community and I go up there and I buy my leather. I buy sides. Uh, sides average anywhere between uh, 24 square feet all the way up to 27. Sometimes I'll find one 28. I can pick it out. I can look at it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just overruns of, you know, tanneries. And the price is right. I mean, I'll, I'm not going to give you the exact price, but I can buy a whole side. I can buy two sides, in fact, for what it costs me to go to Tandy or Weaver and get the same leather and take the chance of it not getting here and being something I can't use. So, like I said, I like to go look at it. You've got to buy your leather cheap. And a lot of times, you know, people go, wow, you know, cheap leather. It's cheap. No. Uh, some of the leather that they have, in fact, I'd say most of the leather that I, I run across at the uh, Mennonite community is a whole lot better than what I can get at, uh, at Tandy. You know, it's up to you. You get your leather where you can. If you want to, if you've got deep pockets, go to Tandy, go to Weaver, buy it. But if you're going to run this, if you're going to do leather work as a business, you got to think, buy in bulk, buy as cheap as possible, so you can keep your prices down. I mean, you go buy Wicked and Craig, you buy the top shelf stuff. Well, by the time you get your bag or whatever you're making, you know, you've got to ask $65 for a card holder to hold six, six cards. Well, sometimes people can't afford that. You know, if I make it, eh, I get maybe $20, $25 for it. You go get that top dollar leather and you want to make belts, well, you got to get, you know, $45, $50 a belt. Sometimes people can't afford that. I sell belts uh, anywhere from 20 uh, dollars to 35 depending on if they want tooling how much tooling if they want name how many I tell people if you want your name on it either cost you an extra five as long as you don't use every letter in the alphabet but you know enough rambling this is how we do it now in the next video I will show you how to lay this out and we'll start from there. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with this holster. I don't want to build it, but I mean, if I want to put any kind of border on it, if I want to stitch around the skirt, or what I want to do to it. But I will tell you one thing. Uh, I like to make the skirt a little thicker so what I may do is I may double this up. I won't double this up 
And, you know, one nice thing I will say about uh, using clicker dies is you don't have to do a lot of edging because one side of it's already edged for you. But, and I'm trying, I'll decide if I want to put, see when you bend it, from here where the bend is, down, it's going to be, I think this belt's going to be uh, two and an eighth or so, two and a quarter, I think it is. So what I'm going to do is I travel, I'm thinking about maybe dropping down a little bit and I'll take uh, two pieces of good, good leather, you know, stack them, sew it down in there. So when the, uh, when it's on there, you go to draw, if you don't put a tie down on it, you have a tendency the holster want to jump up and impede your drop. So if you put that on there, it doesn't, it kind of gives it a shelf or a lock. You also can take and poke two holes in the back of there, poke two holes in the uh, gun belt itself and push Chicago screws in it to hold it in one spot. It depends on what your preference is. You know, you're building it, you build it the way you want. I mean, I'm just giving you a general, you know, quick overlay, uh, suggestions, whatever you want to call it. You're one building it. You know what your capabilities are. It's up to you. So, again, like I said, I've babbled long enough here, so uh, keep an eye out. I know it's been a while since I've uh, put up a video, but uh, we've been kind of re- thinking some of the things we're building some of the things we're selling our internet sales for this time of year are we're doing good are we getting rich no are we comfortable yeah but anyways thanks for stopping by and like i say keep an eye out for the uh, part two of this and we'll finish this thing off and show you how i do it and you can take my ideas and this is all free you don't have to pay one hard dime not a dollar not a not a penny not a nickel it's all free unlike some people charge you for you know telling you how to run how to start up a leather business i watched free youtube videos and i feel that i'm pretty successful in what i'm doing between the uh, shoe repair and the leather work making horse tech and reproduction uh, stuff. We're doing good. I'm happy. There's only one way you can go. Up. All right. Again, I have babbled too long. Have a good day. Stay safe and keep doing the leather work. It's fun and it shows a little bit of creativity. We're out of here. Bye now.